Freeman, you bring up some just phenomenal points here. Really, really good analysis. Good, good job with your writing. I was fascinated with your writing. Um, and I think to a high degree, you, you kind of nailed it. There's a few things I kind of disagree with, and I'll talk about that. But this assignment is very, very, very similar to our flat avatar assignment for the postage stamps, isn't it? Um, with one exception, is this is using gradients. Right now, this is using a, a technique uh, where we, we are doing gradient to full transparency. Um, and that's an interesting technique. Uh, and in the... In the um, flat avatar stamp series assignment, we're not allowed to use gradients. It's all depicting with subtle tones. So just a little bit of difference here, but uh, otherwise it's an identical technique. Love the hair. Wow, that hair looks great, doesn't it? Now as far as the hard line is phenomenal, depiction of shadow and highlight is pretty accurate. However, I think it's overdone. The reason I say that is, is it's just, it's just, it's too distracting. There's, this should be so much more subtle, these depictions right here, uh, from this highlight right here to this shadow. And I think that's a little too dramatic. And I think right here, here, and here are also depicting a little bit too much drama. This right here is an anomaly because this is stylistically different than anything we see in the rest of the illustration. If there's a weak link in this piece, it's right here. And also I think the depiction of shadow and highlight could be done much, much more subtly. You'll notice when you're working on your uh, avatar portraits that you know the depiction of shadow and highlight without using gradient needs to be done with a high, high degree of restraint. Um, okay, and then you talk about color. The, and, and I think that the, the, the distribution of color here is directly related to the background color. So that's that's good, and you're right. As a, as a digital designer, as a digital illustrator, one is, is very much able to assign any colors here. I mean, you could change this monochromatic color scheme to blue, red, purple, brown, black, well, black would be tough, but any color, green, you know what I'm saying? It's just a matter of redistributing the colors. So I agree with you there. And one thing I do disagree with you is, but, 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 but Ed, uh, I would say this is almost as real as it can get being a vector illustration. And I, I got to tell you, if you go out there on the web and, and you just say, you know, do a web search, do an image search, something like uh, realism. In, or photorealism in digital illustration, uh, photorealism using Illustrator, you'll see that we can take, I mean, you can do an illustration that looks like a photograph and even a trained eye can't tell the difference. So the degree of realism that we can achieve in Illustrator, it will blow your mind. This is not even close to what we can get in terms of realism. So just want to make that specifically clear, clear to you. All right, so that's it. Great example, uh, Freeman. My question for you is this. Can you describe the similarities and differences between this technique here and our technique using for flat avatar? I kind of gave you some, some hints as we started this, but let me know the similarities and differences um, between this and our avatar assignment. All right, good job, Freeman. Thank you very much.